Have you got the music sorted for tonight, then? Uh, let's see. The PWL Hit Factory, Volume 3, the best of Alvin Stardust. Now that's what I call music, Volumes 9 to 13, and Crucial Tracks by Aswad. Brilliant. Good, good, good. Just need Jane to hurry up with the helium for the balloons, and then we're all done, I think. Here she is now. Ah, fantastic. Nice big tank of helium. Uh, not as such. That's a tank of helium, isn't it? No, they'd run out. I got this instead. It's meant to be as good. What is it? Our Fotmum. You what? Our Fotmum contains all the same properties as helium. It's just more expensive, apparently. Well, as long as it wasn't too much more, and it still does the same job. And as long as it still makes your voice go all high and squeaky when you inhale it. A slight problem with that, I'm afraid, Mark. Why? Well, uh, that's the other difference between this and helium. If inhaled, our fot mum affects your voice in a different way. How? Well, if you inhale it, it makes your voice sound like Windsor Davis. Don't be absurd. Well, that's what they said in the shop. Well, sir, if I inhale this, it's going to make me sound like, well, a Welshman. No, Windsor Davis. Well, I don't care whether it makes you sound like Maurice Stewart, Richard Stilgo or Morrissey. Just get on and fill those balloons with it. Pat and Mick will be here in less than an hour. Right, I'm going to go and check the cake. OK. Can I try a bit, just to see? Oh, go on, then. Say <sighs> aloud, lovely boy. <laughs> I told you it was true. Oh, my God. Let me have a go. <sighs> right then, you are a lot. <laughs> and again, oh, let's have a go. <sighs> you will promise me, Green Grass, not to tell what you heard. <laughs> me now. I will not have gossip in this jungle. Will you two stop mucking about and just blow up those balloons? Now, what icing should we have on the cake? Chocolate! Mark! Move it, move it, move it! Right, give that here. <sighs> Shut up! Oh, flaps. The signal's gone. Oh, let's just leave it and go to bed. It's too risky and it's stressing me out. Jesus, Jill, just relax. Tell you what, you listen to this while I try and get the signal back. Hello, and welcome to the Get Karma with Karma series, with me, Guru Brian Spongefinger. This is part five, The Sea. First of all, you need to find a quiet, comfortable space. Mute your mobile, put the cat out, gag your kids, and lock them in the cupboard under the stairs. Finally, turn off your TV, but don't forget to record Deal or No Deal, or you'll never find out whether Bob from Northampton does actually win that five quid or not. And that could endanger the very fabric of your inner karmic force field thingy. Close your eyes and empty your mind. <laughs> that was quick. Well done. Take a deep breath in and out. And in and out. Fantastic. No, no, you carry on. You're really getting the hang of it. Scientists have actually proven that if you keep breathing, you are far less likely to suffocate and die. Can you feel your body starting to relax? True relaxation. Every muscle, every tissue in your body is slowly losing tension. <laughs> Sorry about that. Maybe I was a little bit too relaxed. But luckily, we don't have to open the window, as we are now on the open sea. Can you hear the sea? Oh, isn't it lovely? We're drifting. We're drifting away. Actually, can, can you still see the shore? Me neither. W where are the oars? You didn't pack them? Neither did I. I thought you said you were packing them. Never mind. Never mind. Stay calm. Stay relaxed. We can't be too far out. <laughs> what was that? Did you hear that whale? And a dolphin. And another. Now they're all around us. They, they, they're getting quite excited now, aren't they? Now, now. Calm down. Th this isn't very relaxing, is it? Will you shut the f*** up? Keep relaxing, stay focused, keep relaxing. Oh, bollocks. What next? You have got to be joking. This isn't what I envisaged. Now, just stay focused, stay relaxed. Oh, for f sake. Look, 
It's the Air Sea Rescue. Over here! Over here! Save us! Relaxing enough for you? Not really, nah. Good, good. Yes! A bite-sized look at the history of Europe. Part 4, Sweden. Many Swedes enjoy chicken as part of their diet. So then, ladies, how have we all been doing this week? All been good girls? <coughs> I see. So I take it from that, I have three ladies who have been bad. Just remember, ladies, it doesn't matter if you've been a bit bad. It's perfectly natural at this stage, so don't worry. We're all in this together, okay? Susan, we'll start with you. How bad have you been? Oh, I'm sorry, Valerie. I was okay until the weekend. We had a girls' night in and they all brought so much chocolate round. Oh, I just couldn't resist. That's fine, my love. We've all had those kinds of nights. So, bad girl number two, Marina. How about you? I'm so sorry, Valerie. I went to the pub and just... the wine, I... Come on now, Marina. It's just a tiny setback. Don't fret. And finally, you, Charlotte. What bad thing did you do this week? I... killed a man. Yeah, me too. Actually, there's nothing like pouring on loads of gravy and getting stuck into a big, juicy, tender, succulent breast. Yeah, lots of potatoes and carrots. Actually, I was talking about women again. Gravy? Each to their own. Oh, it's impossible to have a conversation with you. You just zip from one subject to another and then back again. And to be completely honest, I'm finding the whole thing a bit demeaning to women. Do you mind if we just change the subject? Not at all. Thank you. Just trying to pass the time. Mike? Yes? What's your favourite fatal disease? I, I don't have one. Actually, I'd go as far as to say that the vast majority of people don't have a favourite fatal disease. Really? Really? Okay then, if you had to pick your favourite between, say, the plague and consumption, which would you go for? Uh, are you out of your mind? What? Uh, well, we are talking about two horrific and painful diseases from which millions of people have suffered and died throughout history. Who in the right mind would prefer one over the other? I do. What? Well, everyone had the play, didn't they? But consumption. Well, it was a bit more exclusive, a bit more bohemian. You're sick. Well... L no, stop right there. If you can't talk about something that isn't either completely and utterly sick or demeaning to women, then I'm not interested. You can just sit there quietly. Sorry? So you bloody well should be. Mike? What now? Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan? OK, well, that's more like it. Well... Now, in terms of pure fighting skills, I think you'd have to go with Bruce Lee. Yeah. But, in terms of pure entertainment value and stunts and stuff, I think that Jackie Chan is yeah, your man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who do you think would win in a fight? <sighs> Probably the plague. Yeah, and I think you're right. Consumption is well soft. A bite-sized look at the history of Europe. Part 5, Finland. Finland is the only European country that begins with the letter F, with the exception of France. More news with me, Fenella Coach Trip. 
Britain's biscuit lovers have reacted angrily to the controversial decision to remove the picture of cows from the top of malted milk biscuits. Until now, the biscuits have famously sported a framed picture of two cows, one large cow and another that is probably in the distance or something. But yesterday, Vic Urinal, spokesperson for Allied Biscuits Limited, announced that the cows no longer represented contemporary Britain and have had to be scrapped. The cows no longer represent contemporary Britain and have had to be scrapped. However, the move looks set to rile biscuit fanciers. In an email we got earlier, Trevor Escalator, chairman of the UK Biscuit and Scone Council, called it a ridiculous attempt to meddle with British craft and tradition, and that biscuit fans should boycott the new designs. The new malted milk biscuits go on sale in most stores next week, with the cows being replaced by pictures of Girls Aloud, Wayne Rooney, and TV wildlife expert Chris Packham. <laughs> Alien Fudge was conceived, written and performed by Alex Babbage, Nicola Borthwick, Christine Strickett, Geoff Thompson and Ian Williams. It was produced by Forbidden Helmet Productions in association with BNU for BBC Oxford. Well, that was that then. What did you think, Jill? Jill! Jill? Jill? Jill! And now, on BBC Radio, Martin Drainage continues his series remembering Enid Blyton. This week, Martin reads Chapter 6 of 5,000 Go to Smuggler's Cove. The moon seemed so much brighter tonight. It was almost as though it was helping them to find the cove. Julian stopped at the cliff edge. I think it's down there, Julian called pointing at an area of rocks that stuck out right across the beach like a giant turtle shell. I say, piped up Dick, does anyone know how we can actually get down there? The cliff is awfully high. I think we should keep walking a bit further, offered Anne. Or we could try to climb down, suggested George. I say we go back and get a rope, said Timmy. Let's just go home, whined Peter. Yes, I agree, added Mary. Me too, said William. How about going back and getting a boat, said Daisy. I think it's this way, said Michael. No, this way, said Betty. It's this way, said Geoffrey. Never, said Jane. Just jump, said Gregory. This way, screamed Angela.